Hey guys, it's Mary. It's Saturday night and it is seven o'clock. Um, sorry I'm a little late. I'm going to confess I was hoping that the Preakness would get run before 1900 hit my, my computer, but it did not. So here we are and we will get going. So let me just be sure I'm actually uh, transmitting to anybody. It looks like I am. That's a good thing. Um, hopefully it will unblur here in just a second. It looks a little blurry, doesn't it? Let me see if I can... Nope, it's not going to let me do anything. Hi, Jean. Hopefully that'll be okay. I'm going to play with this just a second and see if I can see why it's being blurry. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Mary. Hi, Llewellyn. Glad that you could join from Madison, Alabama. I spent a few years in Madison, Alabama. Llewellyn, it's pretty there. Uh, hi, Barbara. Hi, Pam. Hey, Sue. Hey, Karen. Glad you could join tonight. Hi, Linda from California. Hi, Faith. Oh, dog, don't lick my toes. Finn is under my table licking my toes, which, you know, is awesome, except for how it's he's licking my toes. He really does like to lick toes. Now, you know, it's really bizarre because I can totally see, thank you, Marianne, I can totally see in my camera that it is completely unblurry. So, you guys, is this blurry? Is it blurry for you? I'm I'm seeing blurry on my computer screen, but I'm not really sure I trust it. Hey, Jean, I'm loving having this on Saturday myself. I really like that. Um, especially on a day like today because uh, I didn't do very much useful in the card making department and so um, I don't have a blog post done or anything for tomorrow so I've got work to do yes he did miss me and he misses my toes I guess all right so good it's clear so I am getting bad juju from my computer but that's good I would rather me be getting bad than you alrighty let us go ahead and commensurate if we can um, I am making this card. This is the card I gave you the sneak peek of. It uses the new Bloom and Grow stamp set from the 1920 uh, annual catalog, which is, oh, by the way, coming out on the 4th of June, which is totally less than, less than two weeks from now, I'm pretty sure, right? Let's see, today's the 18th. Well, it's just over two weeks, but that's pretty soon. Uh, so anyway, it is bundled. It's a beautiful stamp set. And the thing that I think you need to understand, let me show you, the pictures in the catalog and on the front of this catalog, of this stamp set case, do not do the sheer size of this, of these images justice. So here is the image that we're using on the front. And here is its picture. Do you see the difference there? Can you see the difference? So this is a big, gorgeous set. Um, it is definitely a focal point kind of a set, and I think you are going to love it very much indeed. And what's really awesome is it has all of these wonderful um, floral images and bunches of leaves oh, and dies to cut everything out. Woohoo! hoo Dies to, yeah, the 1920 catalog. There was a dash in there, 19-20 instead of 2019-2020 I just I shortened it down cuz I'm you know cool like that I use slang so the 1920 catalog that's 2019 to 2020 uh, so the budding blooms dies is going to be one of the bundles and if you've gotten your catalog you've noticed that one of the coolest things about our new catalog is at the very front they give us about five pages where they have listed every single bundle in the catalog with the pages that those bundles are on. And something you may or may not have noticed is where the bundle listing is, hi Karen, where the bundle listing is, there's a sample using that bundle, and then there are different samples when you go to its page back in the back of the catalog. So there are lots and lots of ideas and inspiration photos in this catalog, and, it's, and that's awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and get going. Um, what I used was the Woven Threads DSP with the Bloom and Grow stamp set. So I made it into a thank you card, and this is the inside. And I'm gonna show you a couple of different coloring techniques today, and we're using some of the new in colors. All right, so here we go. Here we go. I have done a little pre-cutting 
because how much cutting can you watch a person do? Um, all of these will be on tomorrow's blog, so you don't need to worry about writing them down. But I have used one single design of the Woven Threads DSP. I've used both sides to make the card. All right, so we've got a piece for our envelope. This is a Rococo Rose five and a half by eight and a half piece of cardstock, scored and folded at four and a quarter. And then I have used uh, Sahara Sand as my matting. I've got two pieces that are four by five and a quarter for the card front and inner liner. And then another piece that is smaller to mat the middle part. Okay, so let's start. Let's start, let's start, let's start. We'll go ahead and get this piece matted to start off. Yeah, the darn Preakness, I don't know what in the world they were just taking forever to get to the gate. So I am certain I will be able to see it on replay afterwards. So if you guys are watching, don't tell me who wins. I'm not really sure I care because I just don't care, but it's kind of interesting always. Well, actually I kind of hope Improbable wins because I like Mike Smith and he, he's an older guy and he has ridden some rides. All right, and now I'm not going to uh, adhere this quite yet. First, I'm going to get my sentiment stamped on here. So let me pull out my stamp of Potamus. And another, we'll use a sep my separate panel here. Now, the only kind of persnickety part about this is this piece right here is almost square but not quite. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Jacqueline, no worries. Hi, Vanessa. Hey, Lenny, glad you could join. Hi, Ginger. Um, it is almost square, but not quite. So you, you do need to double check that you're, that you're stamping the sentiment the correct direction. And that is right. You can see if you turn it the other way, it doesn't work. You see how it doesn't work? So this is the correct direction. And I'm going to take the mat off and place it in here. And what I did before we started is I stamped my big floral image in Tuxedo Black Memento ink, let it dry really well, and then cut it out, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a dry fit on here so that I can make sure that I'm putting my sentiment right where I want it. And I highly encourage you, or not my, yeah, my sentiment. I highly encourage you to do this uh, because it kind of matters when you've got your sentiment snugged up to your floral image, it kind of matters. Okay. And I think that will work. We'll put it right about there. All right. So I've got it pretty well centered. And now I'm going to... Now I'm gonna do that all again because I just picked it up with my <laughs> with my cutout image. What a dork! What a dork! Okay, let's go ahead and try that. Let's just try that again. Start from the get go and try it again. This is the stickiest photopolymer stamp I have picked up in a while. Okay, so get it kind of straight. Get my floral where I want it, and I'm good with that. Now let me see if I can pick it up. You sorry little booger. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, you guys. This is what we call in the industry the perversity of an inanimate object. All right, there we go. That's going to be close enough. Get out the way. Okay, 15th time is a charm. Okay, now I'm going to stick that up in the corner. And I'll tell you what, I, and I, you don't need to do this. If you can do, if you can make these stamped images, uh, without a crutch, then you are welcome to do that. But I have gotten to where I simply do not trust my eyeballs anymore. And so even with the photopolymers, especially with the sentiment, thank you, Patricia, especially with the sentiments where I kind of really kind of do want it to be straight, I do use the acetate on my, from my Stampamajig. So it is a pretty highly used tool. Um, I will tell you, if you do not have a stamp of a jig, please get it. Please get it. Even if it's just for this wonderful acetate. And, because look what you can do. I've stamped the acetate and I can pull it down 
and now I'm pretty certain that it is straight, okay? And I am happy with that. It's a little bit pushed off to this side, but I'm gonna live with it because I can fill in with leaves. So that's just my tip. I really like to use it to line things up. Um, if you don't have an eyeball that makes everything crooked like I do, then, then you can certainly go straight up. Let's see, for card grooming because they put their mat in the wrong place to move the stamp. Each person put their mat in a different place, even though I explained, and the stamp got moved all over the place so a couple couldn't figure out. <laughs> yeah, yep, it does happen. It happens to all of us. And my theory is there's them who have and them who will. Okay, so I have stamped this, in case I didn't make it clear, I've stamped this in new Pretty Peacock ink, which is one of the new... 2019-2021 in colors. And I'm going to stamp that again just to make it a little darker. Like so. Okay. And since it's one of the dark pigments, I would recommend uh, making sure you let it dry for a minute. Just, just throwing that out there. Okay? Alright, so now we can... Give it a little shake and we can make sure we know where our mat is supposed to be and we'll go ahead and mat that up on our Sahara sand. Hi Amy, glad you could join. It's hard to hear what the teacher is saying when we're, <laughs> yeah that's true, that's true, that is true Mary. All right, a little liquid glue here. And we'll get it stamped. Now, there are m several different very pretty designs in this Woven Threads DSP, and you could do the same exact card layout with any one of them. Really, you could. Okay. Now, we're going to... This is how the card is going to lay out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of the new linen scallop linen thread this is not beautiful and it is in pretty peacock is the one i'm using i certainly think you could use the rococo rose you could even use the um, seaside spray i think you could use any of them but i selected the pretty peacock and once again i'm going to do a dry fit of my my uh, big image here because really i want it right behind the flowers. Can you see how I did that on the sample? I really kind of want it right behind the flowers. Okay, so that's where it's going to go and just I'm just holding the ribbon now and moving everything out of the way. Okay? And then I'm going to take a little bit of liquid glue and I'm going to lay it down on my... You could use snail if you wanted. I, I used liquid glue just to kind of hold it in place. And in a second I am going to, and it kind of comes through. Don't worry about that. If you're not covering it, worry about that and use snail. But since I'm covering it, I am not concerned over that. All right, and I'm going to cut that off like so. And then use a couple of glue dots to secure it on the back. Mm -hmm. Once I find my, my glue dot picker upper, that is the technical term, my glue dot picker upper. And just do that, like so. All right. This is, I love this ribbon. This is so pretty. It's so pretty. Um, it's very one-sided, though, so you'll have to keep that in mind as you're making your cards. It doesn't have anything on the back. You can see the back is completely plain. All right. So let's set that aside. And then I'm going to use some dimensionals, uh, which I'm going to locate here where I put them. Here we go. I'm going to use some dimensionals to pop that over the top. All right. I think, I think this card might be a dimensional personal best for me. I think I've got like 1,900 million zillion on the whole card because I've got nine on this panel and then I have nine on the front and then I even have some on my flowers. So I kind of went for it with the dimensionals, just saying. Not that I don't usually because I t 
totally do, but today I really went for it. Loves me. I think it's because on my last order, I had a bunch of Stampin' Rewards to spend, and so I bought a whole bunch of stamp Stampin' Dimensionals, so I feel real flush. Feeling real flush with Stampin' Dimensionals. Oh, you guys, today we went to Tractor Supply to get uh, bedding for the stalls and some dog food, which is not the story that I'm fixing to tell you. The story I'm fixing to tell you is usually, sorry, I got to pull it to me just a little bit. I just want to line up the top and bottom and center it on my card front. Okay, just like that. Usually, trying on clothes in a place like that is is problematic, right? Because all the clothes seem to be like really little. They're, they say they're the same size as I'm used to, but they're not. And so it's always a thing. Well, today, me and, <clears throat> me and Finn went into the dressing room. And I put on a pair of pants that is the size I would normally wear. And guess what? They fit! And they wouldn't have a year ago. And that is so freaking awesome. And then, then I put on some wellies, which are like rubber boots, right? For gardening and walking about in the rain. And they come up about halfway up your calf. And I've always had fat calves and they wouldn't fit. But today they did. Ah, yeah, I was so excited for me. So it helped me to not eat the candy bar that I bought. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a couple of different coloring techniques, okay? So the first one that we're going to use on this large image is we're going to use a blender pen and the lid of the ink pad. And, and so all you have to do is just kind of give it a squeeze like that. Okay, and that transfers ink to the top of the ink pad, and then you're just gonna use that like a palette, all right? And you always wanna have a little piece of scratch paper, and you want to be sure that you have a moist blender pen. In case you didn't know it, these run out, okay? So you really, really do want to have a moist one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color my leaves and berries with my uh, pretty peacock, and I want my berries to be dark, so I'm picking up ink on each berry. All right, now I'm using Tuxedo Black ink was my, was my image, and so it's not gonna let the ink run. All right, so the trick, hardest part about this is making sure you find all the berries. You can always go back, but it always does help to find all the berries. Okay. Oops, there's some more berries. See, it's easy to lose track of berries when they're buried, <laughs> when the berries are buried in the leaves, right? Okay. Now, the cool thing about this technique I'm showing you is that, that looks like, yes, that looks like a berry. You can get some different colors with just one color of ink. So now I'm gonna use the same ink pad, same ink color, and I'm gonna color my leaves. And I'm gonna get more color variations by not picking up any more ink. And you'll see how that's gonna change the color as I move along. And when I get tired of that, I'm just gonna pick up a little ink and maybe wipe a little bit off. Cause I want these little leaves to be a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter than the berries, a little bit lighter than the, the smaller leaf or this large leaf here. So easy peasy, we're really just coloring inside the lines. Unlike blends, you don't really have to worry about this bleeding out, not bleeding out as in hemorrhaging, because that would be weird, but bleeding outside the lines. What you do have to think about a little bit as you're coloring, especially if you just use a whisper white and you don't use like a watercolor paper or the whisp the shimmery white paper works really well, um, is you don't wanna do a whole lot of scrubbing and coloring. You want to get the color on and get away from it because it will actually break down the surface of the cardstock if you get too much going on and spend too much time. So, you know, move it along a little bit. And for all of you who are saying congratulations, thank you so much, I appreciate that. It really was quite validating. And it's kind of a boost because there are days when I think, you know what, I do not ever, ever, ever again want to see cauliflower rice. 
I hate broccoli. I've de I've decided, no, I don't hate broccoli. Obviously, I don't hate broccoli. I buy it by the ton. But some days you just want pasta. Oh, just so you know, in July, when I am in Rome, there will be no cauliflower rice. No cauliflower rice at all. I doubt I will even look at anything with broccoli in it. Okay, just so you know. I plan to have me some Italian food and some Greek food. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna add a little more color to some of the leaves so that I get a little more depth. This is really easy and it's kind of fun. But you'll see I'm I'm not I'm not scrubbing. You, maybe you can't see that I'm really not scrubbing. I'm I'm being gentle with the with the cardstock, okay? So just put in a little bit of color onto some of them so that you get some variation in the leaves. Okay. Now, we're going to wipe off the blender pen tip and I'm going to color so the sketch challenge that I went with this is the FM the freshly made sketches and it showed three it has three circles across the bottom and so I did that I by coloring three of the flowers one color and the other two another color so I'm just I'm playing with the sketch but you know I missed a berry where's a berry where's a berry where's a berry I don't see a berry. I'll find the berry as I'm coloring. I'm certain of it. Okay, so this is Seaside Spray. And I am just cleaning off my blender pen. And I'm going to color these two smaller flowers. And so what I did here is I just, I'm coloring the centers a little bit darker by going back and getting ink more frequently like that. Seaside Spray is very, very pale, so it's going to want a couple of layers to get the darker colors. So I'm just laying in a little color right now. The hardest part about this is determining which petal goes with which flower so that you don't inadvertently color what should be a Rococo rose leaf petal in Seaside Spray. Okay, so I've got that one colored. I'm gonna let it set for a second and dry and then I'm gonna go back in and add a little color but I'm gonna do this other one while I'm waiting for that okay is it hot where you guys are it's like gonna be in the 90s tomorrow here that's crazy I mean it's really only May that's a little early It's a little early for it to be so hot. I, we had like three days where I was able to have the windows open and it was wonderful. Okay, so I've got that color laid in as well. Now I'm gonna go back to my, my first seaside spray and I'm just gonna put a little color where I have decided with my seriously non-artistic eyeballs that it should be a little darker. That's just me. And you guys can color how you want. It's your little flower. It's your little flower. Okay. All right, and then we'll do a little bit here. And then we'll color the large ones in Rococo Rose. I'm sorry, this is probably a lot like watching paint dry. Or ink, <laughs> as the case may be. It's like watching ink dry. Okay, now let's do a little Rococo Rose. Cold and raining in the San Joaquin Valley. Yeah, I bet you are ready to be warm. You know, that's the problem. I don't know you guys if you guys are like that, but I get to where I, I don't want it to be whatever it is. If it's hot, I want it to be cold. If it's cold, I want it to be hot. I just, you know, I can't be pleased. Okay, so we're going to do the same here with these three large flowers, except we're using Rococo Rose. And I'm just going to lay some color. Now, I am trying to be a little careful because it won't bleed outside the lines, but it'll dang sure color outside the lines if I hit it with that blender pen tip. So I'm trying to be careful. If I fail, uh, well, if I fail, I fail. This too will pass. All right, there we go. 
Oh, good Lord. Today we went to Costco. No, no. We went to Sam's. And as we were driving in, I could hear a dog barking in the parking lot. And it was, it was only 11, but it was already like 85. And there's nothing that annoys me more than people thinking, well, I'll just run into Sam's for five minutes and my dog will be fine in my car. Well, when I got out of the car, I tracked down the barkers. And sure enough, there were two little terrier dogs in a car. And the people had left the car with the, the, t the front windows were down like this far. You can't see that, like this far. So, and it was sort of in the shade. So it wasn't going to be too hot too quick. But I thought, my goodness, how are they keeping them from jumping out? They could just jump right out. Because apparently, oh, by the way, the Finn man the other day, Wayne was up at the front with uh, Mr. Gilbert, his friend, Mr. Gilbert. That's what Finn calls him. Wayne doesn't call him Mr. Gilbert. Come on, people. Um, and he was going to leave Finn in the truck with the windows down. And Finn said, yeah, no, and jumped right out the back window. So <laughs> we're going to have to be careful about that now. That's, that's a new behavior, one we have not seen before, I guess. That's what it is, right? Now that he's a thoroughly adult dog, which is what the vet called him, not fat, he's not fat, he's adult. He's adult, so I'm like, okay. I guess I've been very adult for most of my life. All right, so we'll get that colored in, add a little more here. All righty. Uh, <laughs> Faith, I know. You know, you actually just did that. Hey, Roz, you probably did that. You put away your winter clothes, and so you caused another cold sweep. <laughs> That's how it was when I was in Baltimore. I kept thinking, you know, we'd they'd give us a day. There'd be like a day with 75, and I'd think, yes. It's going to be warm. I can now wear regular clothes. And then the next day it would be 40. It was like, come on, people. That's just not fitting. That's just not fitting. All right. So we'll put in a little more color here. All right. Now, I'm going to show you. I'm going to take my clear wink of Stoa. And I'm just gonna, I'm coloring just the Rococo rose flowers. Just brushing that right over the top of the Rococo rose flowers. You could do the seaside spray flowers too if and you wanted to. But for my card, I decided only Rococo rose. And no, I have no logical valid reason. That's just what I picked. Maybe because the sketch called for it to be those three so I kind of was calling it out okay so we'll set that aside and let him dry I've got a couple more little things to color right quick but these will go relatively quickly so I'm going to show you another technique here now these are little flower or little leaves that were are in the set right and they all have a dye and I colored I stamped two of them in pretty peacock two leaves in Pretty Peacock, two berries in Pretty Peacock, and three leaf and berries in Seaside Spray. This is not Tuxedo Black, so that ink should pull if and I want it to. It probably won't because I do want it to, so we'll see what happens here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my blender pen and I'm just coloring, and you can see as advertised, it is pulling that seaside spray in, which gives you yet another level of color, all with one, one stamp pad, okay? So I'm gonna do that with all of the leaves on these, and then I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna pick up some actual color because it's not enough. It's not as much as I want. It isn't as much as I want. I'm going to get a little bit more. And I want to color my berries, so I'm going to color them and let it dissipate my ink. And then I'll just give that a little touch. So if you, if you are happy with the light color, you can do that, or you can add a little more with your ink pad. 
All right. Now I can tell you colors like um, the Pretty Peacock and Knight of Navy, Blueberry Bushel, those kind of colors, they're gonna color very nicely um, by just pulling the ink from where you've stamped it. All right, got one more. We'll do some berries. I promise people we'll get you done. I'm I'm promising. I thought you would want to see this, so I'm hoping it's not too boring. Because it's sometimes fun to see different ways that you can color with all of the yeah, it might do it if you did, if I did it quicker, but these have been stamped for a couple of hours. You are correct, Mary. You are correct. Also, if you didn't want that color to pull, I can guarantee you it would. Just I just can guarantee you. Okay, so we're going to do some real relatively light berries here with the pretty peacock. But I think it's kind of fun to do just like a couple that are a little darker, so it looks like a little more berry-ish, like, because no berries are all the same color. At least mine aren't. By the time my berries are ripe, I've got some ripe, some not ripe, most eaten by birds, you know. Also, I don't have any pretty peacock berries. I'm not sure what berry would be pretty peacock, and if you did have a berry that was pretty peacock, I'm pretty certain it would be inedible. Okay, and then I'm just going to do the same with my leaves. There's more ink because there's more stamped image, so that ought to be just about as much color as I want. I kind of like this to be a little lighter because, once again, it gives me more variation on my card, which gives more depth, right? All right. You do still have to be kind of careful that you don't rough up that cardstock, but I did not. Yay, I succeeded. Also, it really helps if you put your lids back on your lens. I'm just saying. Okay, and now we're going to do a quick dry fit, like so, and I think we're going to put some berries over here, and I think we're going to put a berry right around there. And let's put one of these berries right around here, like that. And I think let's put a leaf here. I thought it was so clever. See how I'm, <laughs> I'm just so clever, I'm killing myself. See how I'm sticking that leaf up inside the word? I kind of liked how that looked, like that. That's why you do a dry fit, so you can discover these amazing design possibilities. Ooh, just like Joanna Gaines. I am practically just like Joanna Gaines, except for how I so, so am not. I wish I was like Joanna Gaines, but I so, so am not. All right, pull that down, add in another seaside spray berry over here like that I'll bet you you know Joanna Gaines she's one of those annoying people she could probably make cards like cray cray and just be all so beautiful and we would be like oh Joanna those are the most beautiful cards ever except she'd put shiplap on them <laughs> she'd probably put shiplap on all of them uh, hey Karen glad you could join hi Leah Yes, it's been a minute since I've been on. I'm sorry about that. But I do think the internet is a little better here than it was at my hotel. I don't know why it was so bad. Okay, so that's where I want everything. So I'm just going to lift up the leaf, the flowers, and watch how I do this. So I know that that leaf is stuck inside my sentiment, so I can pick it up. I'm just going to pick this one up like that and put some glue right down on the card front and set it right back in place. Just like that. Just like that. Easy peasy. Because really there's no point in doing all that work dry fitting if you just put it willy-nilly when you get everything together, right? 
and I know that's going to be right there, like that. I'm going to put a little glue on here. See how I stuck that leaf up inside there? Stay. Stay. I command you to stay. And a little more on this leaf, like this. And let's see. I think we're going to go like that. No, I think we're going to go like that. I like it like that better. There we go. All right. Stay right there. Okay, y'all dry while I put dimensionals on this flower. Have you noticed that it really doesn't actually help to talk to your cards? Doesn't at all. Because you know what? They're inanimate and they don't listen. And if they did listen, they would not care what you wanted them to do. They would just be doing whatever the heck they wanted because that's what cards do is whatever the heck they want. Ah! All right, let's see. I'm going to cut this one with my... Don't scream, people. Yes, I know it's my scissors, my ribbon scissors, but I momentarily lost my momentarily lost my other scissors all right here we go glad you liked that one Karen I am just full of good <laughs> tips I'm full of good tips yes most of them learned the hard way <laughs> by wasting cardstock okay here we go all righty and we'll set that on just like that. And that guy right there is being a booger. He, there he is. Okay. All right. So there is the card front. I'm going to use a few. Here we go. These are the new in color faceted dots. Aren't they pretty? Pretty, pretty, pretty. And I'm going to put um, a couple of small rococo rose ones if i can pick it up in the middle of my flower little flowers i'm using the small ones for the smaller flower and a larger not a full size large one but a medium one for the center and then i'm going to go ahead and use i'm going to use that color there i think a little bit different than my original all right, there we go. And then I'm going to use a couple of these to put in the middle of these small seaside spray flowers. Just like that. There we go. And there's the card front. All right. All right, so for the inside, let me show you where we're aiming. Thank you, Lenny. Appreciate it. Thanks, Pam. Helps me with my quota. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is what we're going for on the inside. So we'll pull out our Stampopotamus again. And let's uh, take this sentiment off. And I'll pull up the other sentiment. And once again, yes. Oh, here's the other trick about this card. Do remember, it's not a portrait. If you're accustomed to doing portrait cards, I can assure you that if you have not already made a portrait inside for your landscape card you will i promise i promise okay so i'm using my acetate again just to help me line stuff up just because i i used to have a little better calibrated eyeball but it seems to have gone away thank you janie I don't know what has happened to my calibrated eyeball, but I can assure you it is no longer. It just puts stuff in the whole wrong spot all the time. But not that time. See, if I use the acetate, it works perfectly. If I don't, I can assure you, as soon as I stamp that, you all would be gasping in the ethernet and going, oh, it is so crooked, it is so crooked. All right. And that'll be that, set that aside. And we'll turn this around. And I'm going to stamp one of the other flowers. I like this one. Where are you, other flower? Here we go. I decided these were hydrangeas. 
And I don't know about you, but I love hydrangeas. I love them. So I wanted to use this one again. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay it kind of on the, in the corner like that. And we're gonna do this in tuxedo black. And you'll notice I didn't use an acetate because it's not that critical if it's um, straight. But I'm gonna let that set for a second, so I'm going to do the same image on my envelope front. Put the envelope right there. And that I can see visible wetness, so I'm really gonna let that dry for a second. Okay, now I'm gonna show you another coloring technique, AKA a different coloring technique. But first I'm going to do this. Yes, Roz, this is a wonderful bundle. It is a wonderful bundle. And speaking of bundles, if you guys have been customers of mine for any length of time, you know that when a new catalog comes out, I tend to create bundles for you so that you can fill your stash, save you a little money, and get some things that I think work well together. Um, and the announcement of those bundles will be coming shortly. I'll have an in-color bundle that's going to be modified slightly. Um, we're having a little bit of a quality issue with purple, uh, with, uh, sorry, purple posy. And Stampin' Up! is working on it, so I am not certain when it will be available. So I don't want to have that be part of the bundle and then have y'all be angry with me because I can't order it. So you'll see it's a slightly modified bundle, but it's still going to save you money. And as a result of saving money, you'll be able to purchase Purple Posy when it comes. And if it comes available before the bundles go, I will, I will modify it accordingly. Okay, so now I think I've talked in the past about coloring with my, um, yes, Smear City waiting for a visit. Mm -hmm. I think I've talked about coloring with my clear wink of Stella, and I'm going to show you that. I'm going to just do this. I don't see any more. I think we're good. I just wanted to double check. Now, this does not... No Wink of Stella brush is harmed in the making of this card, okay? Because all you gotta do, if you get if you get ink on your Wink of Stella, you just brush it off and it's gonna go away, okay? I promise, see, all the way clear. So you can't, you're not gonna hurt your Wink of Stella here, all right? You also really aren't gonna do any damage to the lid of your ink pad. If you hate it and you're worried about it when you get done painting with your clear Wink of Stella, use a paper towel and wipe that ink up, but I have never had an issue. So all you do is you, you literally use the Wink of Stella brush as a paintbrush. So I'm going to paint this image with my clear Wink of Stella. And I'm just putting in some pretty peacock dark for the berries. Let's see if I see any more berries. I don't. And then I'm just gonna wipe some off and I'm going to color my leaves. And I like this because you get instantaneous shimmer and glimmer and shine, but not it's not like glitter at all. So it's a really fun technique. It's actually something I really enjoy doing a lot, actually. So, and this particular set is perfect for it because the images are perfect for coloring. And why not get a little shine going? I mean, seriously. And fortunately, the Wink Costellas are in the new catalog, so that is still a viable option. Now that looks like a, okay, I don't see any more, um, I don't see any more of, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I don't see any more berries. Let me pull this over and make sure he's good and dry before I do something stupid. Okay, and I'm just going to color him while I've already got uh, Pretty Peacock on my brush. Alrighty. 
positif. Ok. Now, you guys probably don't see me use aqua painters very much. And it's the classic case of I'm not very good at it, and so I avoid it. Uh, I tend to get carried away with the water, and it, it just goes wonky quick, and so I don't use it. But that's certainly another option for coloring, and and you you should give it a go. But I would highly encourage you to try the Clear Wink of Stella coloring. I would, I would. Okay, so we'll put Pretty Peacock aside and pull out our Seaside Spray. And remember I said I think I think that these look like hydrangeas, so I'm coloring those like my pretty blue hydrangeas. And really all I did is I went, I'm going in and I'm just doing a little bit of color at the start with coloring every petal. And then I'm gonna go back in and lay some darker color to give it a little bit of depth. These are definitely hydrangeas. There's no way around it. Okay, and then I'll just go pick up a little more and lay it in kind of here and there and willy and nilly. Like so. Okay, it got hot in my house all of a sudden. Okay. I'll let that set for a second, and then I'll go back and revisit and see if I want to make any more dark. Remember, you can always put it on, but it's really hard to take color off. Really hard to take color off. All right. And then going back in, putting some more color in. Seaside Spray is a very, very, very pale color, so it's not easy to get a ton of color on. So if you want a ton of color, get ready to lay it in there. All right, let's do a little more here. Okay. And then we'll do our envelope flap while we've got this out. Thank you, Cynthia. I think you should. I think you will, you will enjoy it. Again, the hardest part of this coloring is making sure you're coloring the right petals for the right flower that you're trying to make. So just take a half a second to look and see where things are. It will hold you in good stead. All right, so there's a little color. We'll add a little bit of color in some of these petals here. that and then top this one up here like so all right there we go there's our hydrangeas colored now let's get a little rococo rose out and we'll color those off new hybrid varieties i like it i like it what if you could have, I don't know, maybe you could have a, a Rococo Rose and Seaside Spray Hydrangea on one flower plant. That would be cool. What if it had petals of Rococo Rose and Seaside Spray? That would be awesome. That would be so awesome. Sorry, I've got my tongue between my teeth, so it's hard to talk. I felt like there was something I wanted to say, something I really, really wanted to say, but it seems to be escaping me right this second. Also, I feel like when it's quiet, I should be singing the Jeopardy song. But no, you guys can't win a multi-million dollars on this show, so the Jeopardy song would be inappropriate. All right, just coloring in a little bit there. Oh, my watch thinks it's time for me to stand up. Well, I'm sorry. 
I can't. Okay, here we go. Oh, I might have mentioned I'm also eating a my body weight in gelato in Italy, just saying. Okay, there's the envelope flap, and we'll get this one done. And then we can assemble, and we'll be done. Assemble and done. That's what we'll have to do is assemble and done. And then we can all go about our Saturday evening. You guys can go do your thing. And I do appreciate you joining me. I think this is a better day and time, I have to say. We're going to say how awesome Amy is. <laughs> yeah, that is what I was going to say. I was going to say Amy is awesome. And I'm not even kidding. She's totally awesome. One of the better, best things, bestest, best things that's happened to me in Stampin' Up! All right. And we are almost done. And aren't you glad to know that that <laughs> pretty peacock is dry? So as I drug my big hand over it, I did not smear it. <laughs> but it, it was a close thing, people. It was a close thing. Okay. There we go. I don't like that. I want that a little darker. Okay. And we'll close this up. And I'm going to let that dry for just a second while I put my DSP on my envelope flap. And this is kind of fun you could, because it's the same design. You can either put the pretty uh, Rococo Rose and Purple Posy and Seaside Spray side out, or you can do the calmer linen thread side, linen side. I'm doing this side because I like it. It's party. It's party. Yeah. Let me give that a quick cut. I know, Faith, the, color, the new colors, I really, really like them. I really like them. I'm going to miss Lemon Lime Twist, but these new colors are making up for it by a long way. I'm very happy with them. All right, so there's the envelope flap. And now we will mat this inner liner. Now dog is laying on my foot. He's so sweet. He's just so dang sweet. Okay. I'm gonna take another one of these and put that in the middle of that flower and then I'm gonna put this tiny one Right, where am I going to put that? Do I want to put it here? Don't. I think we'll put it here. That's good. Just like that. Okay, and now into my Rococo Rose card base. Yep, I used to do it on the inside as well when we had the liner uh, dies, but it's so quick and easy. And I think it's kind of fun to have it on the outside because then that's they get to see it right away and they're not it's part of the it's part of the envelope. All right, so we're going to put that on the inside here. And then yes, some more dimensionals. See what I mean? This was like a personal best. Personal best. Dimensionals, dimensionals. I liked Amy's idea of putting a whole sheet of dimensionals on a single card. I think I could take that as a personal challenge because I think I could do it. Yeah, this isn't a card you're gonna make like 700 of, um, but I can also tell you that it doesn't really take a whole lot of time to color, um, but no, you're certainly not going to make 75 of these because it does take a hot minute. 
But think about if you had to fussy cut all those flowers and leaves. Oh my goodness, that would even be more. That would be even more. All right. And there we are, folks. One each card with the new Bloom and Grow stamp set and the matching Budding Blooms dies. So, expect to see this on the 4th of June. I hope you have enjoyed it. I'm sorry it was such a long day. Um, you already do use the whole sheet. Yes, sort of. Okay, yes, maybe. Maybe. Okay, yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> All right, guys. I appreciate you, and we'll see you next week with a new project. I hope you have a wonderful week. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.